Hi everyone and how's it going? It's Stealth and we're back with another video today. I hope you guys are doing great out there and living life to the fullest. And today we're gonna be talking about several alarming things that Mojang said about 1.17, the Caves and Cliffs update, which is coming out next year, as well as about Minecraft in general. Some really alarming things that I feel like not enough people are really talking about during one of their more recent videos on their YouTube channel called Ask Mojang All About Caves and Cliffs. So we're gonna be breaking down these important things that they said and why it's so alarming in today's video. So hopefully you guys do enjoy this video. If you can do me a huge favor and crush the like button for me. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, let's see if we can get over, I don't know, 300 likes and I'll work on the next video. Don't forget to hashtag Stealth Army as well. Join the Stealth Army guys, click that subscribe button. And with that said, let's go ahead and kick things off by checking out the first clip. The first question is from uh, Golden OS, and I'm going to ask this one of you, Felix. Uh, are the cliffs that are currently in your world going to be updated? I live inside of one of, I live inside one of the cliffs in my main world, and I don't know if I should be ready to move out yet. Is is my cliff going to be changed into a new one? I like the idea that uh, you update the game and you open your front door and immediately there's a cliff right in front of you. <laughs> um, but this this is a a kind of fundamental principle that we have is that we don't want to change your existing world. The chunks that you've generated and that you've already built in, we really don't want to... It's not our place for us to go in and start putting new features in there like, oh, here's a nice tree and a, oh, a new cliff to appear. I really do love this clip because everybody seems to be having a good time. They seem really loose and comfortable and just cracking jokes, laughing. So this just looks like a lot of fun, but Back to their point, Mojang doesn't feel like they should have the ability or we should have the ability to change our world, reset it, and get new content. But if you've ever played Minecraft on the console edition, if you remember 4J Studios, the legends, the goats, they've had those features for several years. Reset the end, reset the nether arguably two of the most important, two of the best features ever, which are currently not on Bedrock, by the way. So I do feel like if we did have the option and the ability to reset our world, a lot of people would actually consider or choose to do that, even at the cost of losing all their current stuff. Just receiving new content for a lot of people is more important. Instead of traveling hundreds, possibly thousands of chunks away or blocks away in order to get that new content, just being able to reset your world or reset a certain area is extremely important to a lot of people. And 4J Studios understood that. They knew that and they gave us the ability to do that. So Mojang seems like they're not really interested or at least they haven't really decided if that's something they want to do. But seeing their reactions is more than likely something that will never happen, at least in 1.17. Let me know what you guys think about this option. It's really interesting and I feel like it's probably something that we might not see for a while, but it could eventually come to Bedrock and fingers crossed. But let's go ahead and move on to the next clip. Uh, will new ores be added? Uh, so we're adding copper as we announced it live. Um, and beyond that, uh, we don't have any plans to add any more ores for this update. So if you could add the one ore that you truly wanted, what would you add? Corey? Not gonna lie, this is really challenging for me to watch this clip. I got nothing against anybody in this entire video. They're all amazing people. I've talked to pretty much everybody in this video. I'm friends with a couple of them. They're all very talented and incredible. It's just a little weird and sort of funny at the same time that they're dedicating an entire update to both caves and cliffs. And this is it in terms of ores, copper, and I guess you can consider maybe amethyst or crystals in that category as well. That just seems a little ridiculous because you got to remember too, we're not getting an update this year. So essentially they're taking what, seven, eight to nine months to work on this update and they really haven't considered adding more ores. So I guess that's just really shocking and probably very shocking to a lot of people watching this video if you didn't know. Pretty much what we have right now in the Java snapshots is it in terms of ores, which is like mind blowing. And we're not getting this update until later next year, summer of 2021. Like, wow. Let's move on to the next clip. 
Oh, I guess it was, it was like... You uh, set me up, yeah, come was, on. <laughs> uh, Captain Grey FYYX. So, uh, since I know you worked a bit on goats, uh, this one just needs to ask this. Are you going to be able to ride goats in this update? <laughs> Yeah, I've been a little bit of the goat guy, I guess. It's a great mob, uh, but no, you're not going to be able to ride a goat. And it's a little bit as Corey said before, we want all our features to be unique in some way, and we already have the horse that you can ride on, so we don't want to take that away from the horse. However, I still think that the goat is going to be a really fun mob for everyone to explore. You guys could probably tell how I felt just off of my reaction. Like, I have no poker face. Like, everything I feel I usually express <laughs> facially. Like, I, I can't hide anything. And I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way because it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up because we already have mobs in the game that, you know, you can already mount. There is a mob that you can mount before the horse. I mean, we had the pig with, you know, a stick with the carrot and that was before the horse. It didn't really, you know, overlap with the horse because inherently the horse is a different mob. It's a different animal. So it's gonna act differently. Same with the goat. The goat is a very unique and different mob and animal compared to the horse. They're in different environments. And then we have the Strider, which was recently introduced in the 1.16 Nether update. And that's very similar to a pig with a stick and a carrot. They act very similarly. However, they give a very different experience. And that's the very important thing that we have to realize, and especially Mojang. Just because you can mount a mob doesn't mean it's going to overlap with another mob that you can also mount. So. Hopefully they end up changing their minds and I feel like especially for future updates, but let's go ahead and move on to the next clip. So are the underground structures going to be updated as well? Uh, for example, mineshaft, dungeons, strongholds or fossils. And what's the plan for making these old school structures work in my fancy new caves? Generally, when we do an update, we try to look at uh, what can we add and, and expand the game on. Uh, and, and we kind of really like the structures are already there. Uh, we're, we, we did have conversations about it and we're gonna go over them to see if there's things that really need to be like brought into the, the 2020 <laughs> or you know to do to do be on par with everything else uh, but generally no generally we, we, we like to add new things to your world yeah. All of these developers that we're seeing in this clip are very active in the community like they're active on Twitter and I'm sure they're active on discord and everywhere else. So I don't know why they have this mindset. Maybe it's a studio thing. Maybe it's like a corporate thing. I don't know because I think a lot of complaints, especially going back to 1.16 was the fact that they didn't update the Nether Fortress, one of the oldest structures in all of Minecraft. It looks outdated. And even going back to Village and Pillage update, they dedicated an entire update to not only updating the villagers, the pillagers, but also the villages because the villages looked extremely outdated. So this is just another thing where they repeat or they go into this cycle where they pick and choose when to do something. And then the next year they could be completely against doing that very thing they just did. So a lot of contradictions going on here. I don't know if they're going to end up updating the mine shafts, the stronghold and the dungeons, but I think we can all agree that they all look outdated. They all look like they were built like 10 years ago. So considering they're updating the caves, I think it's only right that they update, you know, the mine shaft, the dungeons and the stronghold. But let me know what you guys think about that segment. I really do hope that someone watches this video or maybe someone posts something on feedback saying, hey, this is really important to us. This is a big deal. If you're gonna update the caves, please update these structures. But let me know what you guys think. Let's move on to the next clip. Yeah, I think uh, great to our next question, uh, which is from Slam Green. So you talked a bit about the loot of uh, the, the stuff surrounding the warden, but what will the warden itself drop? Yeah, so we're not quite sure yet. Um, I mean, my initial gut feeling is that I think we kind of want it to not drop anything at all uh, because we don't want to incentivize players actually, you know, attacking them. Um, because that's just not the sort of gameplay that we're going for for the Warden. But also at the same time, it might be interesting to have some sort of trophy item or something which, you know, you can like say, hey, I defeated the Warden. 
I'm gonna tread lightly on this one because King B Dogs is the homie. He's very kind and he always replies to my questions and I just wanna support him because he supports the community and he's super real. Like he's a very real person and so is everybody else in this video. But the thing about what he just said is like, no matter what, you can't control how people play Minecraft. That's part of the appeal of Minecraft is freedom choice being able to do whatever you want whenever you want however you want that's what makes minecraft so i understand that the warden is supposed to be this sort of god tier entity that just causes destruction like mother nature you're not really supposed to mess with it you're supposed to sneak around it but there are going to be a lot of players shoot maybe me as well that are going to be like i'm feeling pretty strong today i'm feeling pretty tough i got my netherite gear even though it's probably not going to work, I'm ready to fight the Warden. There's going to be players like that, and you can't prevent that. So there should be a reward. There should be a drop. It's not necessarily incentivizing, but you should have something as a result of defeating such a strong entity. Let me know what you guys think about the Warden. What should it drop? And let me know what you guys think about all these other clips as well. Maybe I'll do a video where I talk about all the things that surprised me in a good way, all the things that I loved hearing from the developers, and things that got me really hyped and really excited about 1.17. As always, notification squad, y'all are the best, and I'll catch you all in the next video. So take care. Peace.